In chapter 31 of the Count of Monte Cristo, it's now 1838. Two well-to-do young men, Albert de Morcef and Baron Franz d'Epinay, have reserved a hotel suite in Rome for carnival season. Before going to Rome to meet Albert, Franz decides to take a boat trip to Elba. At the suggestion of the head boatman, Gaetano, Franz goes to the island of Monte Cristo to hunt goats. When they arrive after sunset, four smugglers and two Corsican bandits are cooking a goat on the shore. Gaetano gets their permission to land, and Franz is invited to dine with the chief smuggler. Franz must agree to be blindfolded before he is led to the chief's home. Franz learns from a sailor that this chief is not one of the smugglers, but is a French aristocrat who has an expensive yacht and an underground grotto on the island. He is led to the luxurious underground home where he is greeted by a handsome man in his late 30s who says that people call him Sinbad the Sailor. Sinbad is really Dantes. Franz detects that Sinbad had suffered and has a terrible account to settle. But Sinbad protests that he lives a happy life, traveling where he likes, saving bandits and criminals, and imposing his own brand of justice. He suggests that he might go to Paris one day. Franz says that if he does go, he'd host Sinbad. After dinner, Sinbad offers his guests hashish, and the rest of Franz's night is a trippy blur of images. In chapter 32 of The Count of Monte Cristo, Franz wakes up on a soft bed in a cave that bears no resemblance to Sinbad's home. Sinbad has sailed off for an appointment, and spending some time on Monte Cristo looking for the entrance to Sinbad's home, Franz makes his way to the hotel in Rome where he is to meet Albert de Morcef. The owner tells them that the rest of the floor was rented by The Count of Monte Cristo. Franz is dismayed that it's too late to rent a horse carriage for the carnival. In chapter 33 of The Count of Monte Cristo, Franz and Albert rent a carriage and spend the day touring St. Peter's. Franz, who knows Rome well, wants to show Albert the Colosseum by moonlight. The innkeeper warns them that the route they plan to take will make them vulnerable to attack by the famous bandit Luigi Vampa. Albert makes light of the danger, but the hotel owner tells them of Vampa's history. As a young boy, Vampa was a poor but very smart shepherd who learned to read and write, was a talented artist and woodcarver, and became an excellent marksman. But he had antisocial tendencies and an obsessive relationship with his girlfriend. After killing the leader of a group of bandits for attempting to abduct his girlfriend, Vampa became their new leader and now terrorizes the roads around Rome. He typically kidnaps his victims and holds them for ransom. If the ransom does not arrive within a specified time, he kills the victim. 